Hi and welcome back. Today I have a requested video because someone told me she would love to see some of these abstract watercolor journal pages and this is what I'm doing today. I will make a mixed media abstract spread but I will mainly use watercolors especially for the start and for the background. I'm working in my moleskin watercolor journal. I think it's not a very good watercolor journal, but it's absolutely fine for mixed media or um, abstract painting, um, just to, to play and experiment. But I think the paper is not the best if you want to paint traditional watercolor. Please excuse my voice today. I have a lot of videos where I have to make the voiceover for our upcoming holidays. And now I catch a cold and I have a very bad voice and I have to edit all those videos. So I might not talk as much. Um, I will just try to explain the most important steps that I'm taking. And here you can see that I have already started laying down my watercolors, I play absolutely intuitively. I have no plan which colors I want to use um, or which which way the page should or the layout should be. I just play. And this is what I usually do when I am not in a creative mood, but I want to do something or I, I want to make something creative and I don't know what to, where to start and what to make. Then I just grab this watercolor journal and play. Just dip my brush into paint and spread it onto my page. Experiment with textures or patterns that come to my mind. And that's quite relaxing. And it brings me into kind of a flow. I think if you maybe not have an art blog, but kind of a creative... Um, break or no mojo this is a good way just start something just paint to draw do whatever you enjoy doing and then I think the mojo usually comes back Here I'm using a fern brush to just create some different marks on my page and the paints I'm using are from all kinds of different brands. I have a lot of Rosa Gallery paints. I have some from Schminke, I have one or two from Daniel Smith in my, in my um, watercolor palette. Um, I have some more pastel colors from white nights um yeah this this is just something I, I don't have a special brand that i exclusively use i just pick the colors that i think i like the most I bring in some blue as I contrast against all these orangey colors and it's kind of a turquoisey color. I don't know which one. Maybe it's the one from Rosa Gallery and I love how this mixes with that quinacridone gold color to a nice green. Um, that's always nice to know that you can mix something without creating mud.
I think creating such an abstract page is also a nice way to just squeeze in some creative time into a busy day because you don't have to um, do this for hours. You can just uh, do it for 10 minutes. You, you can see my video is not that long and I finished the whole spread in this time with a break in between to let the paints dry or with maybe two breaks. Um, and that, that's something you can squeeze in, just take 10 minutes in the morning and maybe uh, in the afternoon you can take another 10 minutes for the same spread. And that's not much. And I think everybody has these 10 minutes. And that's um, so relaxing, especially when you have a busy or stressful day. For this spread you will find as always a post over on my website with some close-up images and I will also link up some similar videos in the end cards if you maybe like to have some more inspiration um, with this kind of style. Something else I wanted to mention again is that our shop will be on a holiday break from, I believe it was August 16th to September 7th. Um, I have already put a note in our shop, um, so there will be no shipping. We will not ship any orders during this time and... Uh, all the orders that are coming in whilst we are away will be processed after September 7th. Another technique I like to do with this, um, with the watercolors is to just paint with water and create a shape and this will remove the watercolor and give you another nice texture. But that doesn't work on every watercolor paper so this is always something you have to experiment with and that's what um, works great in this moleskin journal but it's also something um, some kind of a disadvantage because if you want to lay your colors and the color underneath reacts so quickly then it could be a bit annoying and that always depends on what you want to do and what you want to paint. I will let this dry completely and come back to add more mixed media on top and more textures and depth. I'm grabbing some stencils and these are my um, my prototypes of the stencils we have in the shop. I cut these with my 
paper cutting machine from I think the one is from paper and one is from a thin stencil material and I tried them just to see if I like to work with them and I really enjoyed it and that's the reason why they became a product in our shop and you will find all the stencils over in the rubber dance shop I will have a link in the video description and please note that usually we do not restock any stencils uh, we we bring out because I think that would be a bit too much for us to sell so we only have one uh, one release and then when these are gone they are gone the only thing that will be restocked is the sketchy leaves stencil because it seems people love the stencil and I myself love it too I use it all the time and that's the reason why we will restock it and we will have also some brand new stencils in autumn when we are back from holidays uh, maybe you like to jump over to the shop and check them out I am applying some vinyl paint through the stencil onto my page. This is uh, the flash paint and I really love using this in my sketchbook as kind of a acrylic gouache um, because it dries super matte, not as glossy as acrylics. And this is also a reason why I like to use it in my journal because it, it doesn't get sticky. I just made the pattern in a light color and I really like the texture I got. To clean the stencil I just put it to the left side and there I also clean my sponge and this might be the start for another art journal spread. I'm doing the same with the other stencil. I use some paints gray acrylic paint this time and I just make some darker marks on my page to get a higher contrast. That's all also something I always try to I always try to achieve uh, to have a big range of values on my spreads so they look more interesting. I'm using just a little bit more paint to make even more marks on my page. When you do this, um, applying paint through a stencil, um, you always have to make sure not to have too much paint on your stencil. And here I tried to make a print with the stencil because I liked it very much on the left side. Not sure if it's visible now because when I'm editing the video, I do this on my phone and then the picture is very small. So I don't know if this had any effect on my page. I let the paint dry and now I'm back with my watercolors again and I will make a botanical shape as a focal image on my page.
And this is my most favorite part, I think, adding some details and textures to the finished page or almost finished page. And here I'm using a Posca pen pen to make just kind of a dot pattern to the darker areas. And that's also quite a relaxing process. Next, I'm grabbing one of my Neo colors. I'm using them a lot for sketching and also to make some marks over mixed media um, stuff because they are quite opaque and I love them. I just make some ovals here uh, with a orangey color. And finally, I wanted to bring in some texture with a ticket stamp just to get some kind of a um, different texture on the page that maybe uh, you can also achieve with a piece of collage. And I really like it. I use a dark blue ink. Not sure which one exactly, but it matches the blue I already have on the page. And I don't make a super perfect stamp impression. I just use, um, use the stamp to add a little bit of texture here and there. Yes, and here you see the finished page. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I hope you will see us next time. And I wish you a wonderful rest of the weekend. Bye.